Hi, I'm Scott Wentworth, the founder and head writer of Wentworth Financial Communications, and I recently had the pleasure of moderating a panel hosted by the Financial Communications Society about sustainable and responsible investing and some of the challenges it creates from a marketing perspective for asset managers. One of the panelists was Blake Pontius of William Blair & Company. He's a global equity portfolio specialist there. And Blake talked about the journey that William Blair has been on since 2011 to integrate ESG factors into its due diligence and stock picking and some of the challenges along the way. Here are some of the highlights of what Blake had to say. Back in, in 2011, William Blair as a firm um, formally committed to integrating environmental, social, and governance factors into our investment process. So, you know, expanding our, our framework for dimensioning corporate performance to include these, you know, extra financial or, you know, non-financial factors. Um, and, and so over the last, you know, seven, eight years, we've really worked to, to more kind of holistically integrate ESG considerations into our fundamental due diligence of companies and, and, and picking stocks. And that's in our mainstream um, mutual funds and, and separate account portfolios that we manage on behalf of large institutional investors, uh, both in the US, um, increasingly in Europe, and uh, in, in Japan as well. And so, you know, I think to echo your comment, it's interesting to see as, as I go out and talk to, to clients and, and consultants, um, you know, the, the disparity and adoption and sort of belief, and as you said, I think mindset is a great way to, um, to describe it in terms of our European clients are, they are not questioning whether this is um, return enhancing. They've, they firmly believe it. Um, a lot of these pension funds, their beneficiaries in Sweden or the Netherlands, they believe it, and it's, it, it's embedded in their investment objectives. And so when they meet with William Blair, they say, oh, well, that's an interesting stock example. Tell me what you guys thought about you know, their exposure to climate change or how they treat their employees. And so there's been an ongoing effort that I'm sort of coordinating for the team to sort of educate our investment team on you know, identifying the relevant ESG factors for sectors, for you know, different industries, and, and really to bring that into their fundamental due diligence. And so it's coming at it from a little different perspective. We don't have dedicated ESG products or mutual funds. Um, so we're really just trying to embed it in our daily workflow and, and view of companies. And so I published you know, a paper a year and a half ago, which I don't know was all that differentiated. Certainly my co-panelists have I think written more thoughtfully on the subject, but um, you know, we're I would I would just classify it as a journey that we're on, and that's how I try to explain it to clients, and then we sort of, you know, communicate it. I, I would say the challenges are that it's such a broad topic, um, and you need to make sure that you are, you know, I think approaching it through. Um, a lens that is aligned with your investment philosophy and process and you're being authentic about it. And, and so for us, you know, bridging the gap between a sophisticated Europe, European client and, and maybe a U.S., you know, fireman's <laughs> pension fund, I approach it through, you know, look, this is another tool that we have to assess corporate performance. You know, it's don't make it political, you know. <laughs> You can talk about climate change and agree or disagree, but you can't really disagree with the fact that there's more regulations around it. And if you're an energy analyst, you should be thinking about those yeah. if you're analyzing a company.